starting to thin out that herd, I'll tell you what. And that Gabriella Labucci, she had better watch it or she is going to be next on the way. I hey, hi dolls, it's me, Wilma Fingerdo with the Fingerdo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under Season 3, Episode 6. Is it Episode 6? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. We're almost done, it's only six episodes? How long is it? Eight? Enough, I'll tell you what. Either way, um, I need to thank this week's Tipper Do's tipper before we get started. Antar15 and my Tipper Do boyfriend, Vito. Thank you, dolls. You're the best. If you'd like to support the Finger Do review with a Tipper Do, you can use the YouTube Thanks button located just under the screen or the link in my description box. Ooh, speaking of my description box, I also have a link for joining the Finger Do family on Patreon. How do I know that? I just welcome a new princess to the fold, James Ryan. Welcome, James Cooey. Seriously, now, Jorge, drink me. What is this tea? It's clear tea. What? Oh, you thought because I was dressed like a lady, I should have something a little more refined than a martini? Well, so you just put it in the teacup? Like I think, Jorge, I'm just going to say. Okay, so let's get to it. Say what you will about Drag Race Down Under. Apparently, most of you hate it. Okay, all. But you have to admit that there has been no drama where the eliminations have been concerned. I mean, up till now, the right queens have sashayed, no offense. Case in point, Nips Madison. Up until last week, she was on an upward swing. I feel like Nipplegate was a blessing in disguise for her. It seemed to humble her, which allowed her to get along with the other queens. This was apparent by the heartfelt farewell the queens gave her. But they didn't linger. With one more queen gone, the remaining queens started to assess the situation. Bumpa was stressing over being in the bottom last week, and the judges' critiques did nothing to encourage her. But the only thing she can do from here on in is her best. Let's hope it's enough. Floor was also feeling the pressure, even though the judges liked what she's been bringing to the runway. Floor still hasn't had a win, and seeing as the queens are now down to the top five, it may be that her chances for a win are quickly disappearing, bless her heart. Thankfully, none of that stress stopped the queens from congratulating Hollywood, although Isis did point out to the room that Ashley Madison had sashayed, even though she did have a challenge win. And then Isis stared straight at Hollywood, right at her. Talk about subtle. Hollywood couldn't care. She just won 5K, and apparently... She wasn't sharing. And that, children of the corn, is how you say suck it. Next day in the workroom, in the wake of the sashaying that's been going on, the top five reflected on who all still hadn't lip-synced. Well, Isis, Hollywood, and Gabby put their hands up. Actually, Gabby went one better by saying she hadn't even been in the bottom yet, which, in my opinion, is exactly when Gabriella Labucci lost her chance at winning Drag Race Down Under. She jinxed it. I haven't been in the bottom yet, she said. Well... Neither is Icy or Holly, but you don't hear them crowing about it. Why? They don't want to jinx it. Idiot. Thankfully, Rue showed up in an overcoat from the David Byrne collection, or someone left a hanger in it. I don't know which, but if you got the David Byrne reference, we can be friends. I bet you thought I was going to say the Joan Crawford collection, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. Rue also told the queens that for this week's maxi challenge, they would be performing individually at a drag brunch. Now, first off, let me say this. If you haven't been to see your local queens do a drag brunch, you need a slap. Seriously, get out there and support your queens. Also, it's a hoot. Needless to say, the queens were excited. This was their chance to shine doing what they do best, or so you'd hope. I have to say, I almost started packing Bumpus things up when she said she was going to do stand-up for the first time ever. Has she learned nothing from Jasmine Mass? Hell, even Gabriella tried to talk her out of it, but the group's granny was determined. Hollywood, on the other hand, told Floor that she had written a song in which she was going to sing opera. Apparently, someone has learned something from Monet. Gabriella Labucci revealed that she was a professional hula hooper, which I thought took a lot of courage. Is there a big call for hula hoopers down under? Because that would explain a few things. And then it was off to workshop their acts with Reese Nicholson and radio host Bree Thomasel, who was apparently having a fizzy bunghole from all the excitement. 
I'm the same way when I eat spicy food. Up first was Signora Gabriella Labucci, who told Reese and Brie that she'd been winding the other queens up by telling them that she was a professional hula hooper with 10 years of owning a hula hoop. Which I'll admit is something. Do you own a hula hoop? No, me either. Signora Labucci lied. She had no skill set to fall back on where the hoops were concerned whatsoever. And from what she told Brie and Reese she was planning to do, I started to think Gabby was in danger, girl. And I'm not talking in a ghost kind of way. Okay, maybe a little. Then production redacted Gabriella's rehearsal. Actually, they redacted everyone's rehearsal. I think they did that so that we would still be surprised during mimosas. Or to keep us from changing the channel, either or. When Gabby's hoops had stopped spinning, Reese felt it was all one note, and that, well, she should try to add more to it. Gabriella couldn't think what more she could possibly add. Reese suggested fire. Oh, that's not good. Forrest Talent was to teach CPR with Roberto, her assistant and part-time sex worker. But I have to say, the bigger news for me was hearing that Flora is a registered nurse. Well, now I love her even more. Seriously, here's the floor. This is not working for me. I'm just saying. Isis said she was doing a dance performance piece about mental health, which Reese and Brie thought would kill a brunch. Well, oh, no, I'm sorry. They thought that would kill a brunch. Dead. Speaking of the dead, poor Bumpa. Her impressions of dogs peeing wouldn't be funny to dogs, never mind people. I mean, the look on Reese and Brie's faces all but screamed, change your act. Actually, they did say it. They told her to do a roast of the other queens instead. Why not? I mean, it's not like any of them would complain. They were already home. Hollywood's desire to keep her act a surprise till showtime may have been, well, her biggest mistake. Clearly, she saw no need to improve perfection. So instead, she and Reese talked about the show's running order. Because she won last week's challenge, Hollywood got to set the running order for the brunch show. And she had some specific ideas as to who was doing what and where. When Hollywood returned to the workroom, she shared those specific ideas. Isis was going to open, then Bumpa, Floor, Gabby, and Holly to close. And even though some of the queens had questions, Gabby, Hollywood was resolute in her decision. Well, until Isis mentioned that although she was fine to open, she thought her act would do better somewhere in the middle. So, going with the someone strong to open concept, Holly asked Gabby if she would like to go first. Well, this got Bumpa thinking that Hollywood didn't think she was a strong performer. Finally, to save face, Hollywood reiterated that she didn't think Bumpa was a weak performer. It's just that until about five minutes ago, she'd never done stand-up before and was a bit of a wild card now. Okay, well, that's fair. It also seemed to calm Miss Love down enough to acquiesce the opening spot to Gabriella. The next day, before the queens got ready for brunch, Gabriella Labucci admitted that she didn't work on her act at all the night before. Well, that's worrisome. As the queens got ready, Flora explained that her drag name wasn't just Spanish for flower, it was her biological mother's name. Flora's mother died in childbirth. Flora said it was her choice. The doctor said there were complications affecting her blood pressure and that she wouldn't survive the pregnancy. Bravely, that beautiful woman chose to put her child first. Well, if that doesn't make you deserving of a crown, I don't know what would. Oh, thank you. And then it was time for the main stage. Rue was entering her blue period beautifully. Well, except for the season one filter, seriously. Michelle was looking very Mother of the Bride and her one-armed bandit. Apparently, Mother of the Bride was the same look Reese was going for. And joining the judges this week, the lead singer of Amel and the Sniffers, Amy Taylor. Up uh, first, Drag Brunch. Now, I cannot stress this enough. Understandably... This was not a drag brunch. A drag brunch is its own unique experience. There's nothing like it. Having queens lip-syncing their little hearts out while you're enjoying a surprisingly tasty eggs, Benny, and two-for-one mimosas. Everyone is sitting at tables. There's usually no stage, so the queens actually have to work the room. I like that they'd sat the other queens at tables to help create that brunch atmosphere, but it didn't really help. I felt like a couple of the queens forgot it was brunch and treated it like... Well, a talent show challenge with very little talent. Tell me I'm wrong. Almost immediately, it was obvious that Gabriella Labucci should have given her act more thought. 
well, any thought actually would have improved whatever clown mime Lucille Ball kind of thing she tried to do. Seriously, she sucked. But I will say this, Rue was the best audience for each and every queen that took that stage. She was invested, she was interested, she was engaged. Now that's how you win an acting challenge. Oh! Bumpa was next, and I have to say, I didn't think anything could have made Gabriella's act look better. I was wrong. <laughs> Not only wasn't Bumpa entertaining, she cut out most of the material that was even slightly funny. In Bumpa's defense, I think she would have done way better at a real brunch with an audience to feed off of. Okay, maybe not way better. Even Rue giving Bumpus suggestions like it was an improv challenge shouldn't help her. Gabriella must have been relieved. Thank God for Floor. Not only was she a refreshing hoot, but she looked stunning. Seriously, is no one else impressed by her makeup? Just me? One of the upgrades Floor gave her act for the brunch was to switch out her assistant, Roberto, for Reese Nicholson. I don't know if Floor was that funny or we were just desperate for a laugh after Gabby and Bumpa, but here's the Floor. No one saw that performance coming. Idiots. The definite star of this brunch was Icy Isis. She bantered off the top and then ditched her blue organza trench coat and performed the hell out of her number. Isis looked gorgeous. She moved beautifully. And what's more important, she was captivating. You couldn't take your eyes off her. Well, I couldn't at any rate. But Icy wasn't done yet. She pulled a fan out of her decollete and performed a few tricks. Not like that. But Icy wasn't done there. Then she pulled out a pair of flappy fans. Is that what you call them? You know what I'm talking about, those fans with the long extra fabric on them. Anyway, she worked that fabric better than an Olympic tumbler, I'll tell you what. When it was all over, even though it was Hollywood who was next, I was scared for her. I will say this, Hollywood star started strong. She sang opera live, and she was good. But just as I was starting to enjoy it, Holly ditched her wig and started lip-syncing to a dance number. Granted, it was her dance number, but even with another costume change, nothing Hollywood did was as interesting as her opening, or so I've heard. Don't get me wrong, she was way better than Gabby and Bumpa, but then, so is paint drying. But compared to the originality of Floor and Isis's numbers, well... Hollywood was all right. But then it was time for the runway. Category is not my backyard barbecue. Senora Gabriella Labrucci was first and right off the top. I love this outfit. It was camp and cheeky, but her makeup was so glam, so fashion that I wouldn't be surprised to see this look at more than a couple of fashion weeks. Finger do for Fab Gabriella. Finger do for Gabriella Labrucci. Bumpus ode to Olivia Newton, John and Grease was fun, but nothing to do with barbecues, no matter how she tried to spin it. So, figure don't for Bumpa. I was so surprised at how good and camp Flora's runway was. And once again, her makeup was exquisite. Those burn marks looked painful. This was such a simple yet fabulous idea that I couldn't help but give Flora a finger do. Seriously. I see Isis's runway had two of my favorite things, leopard print and sausage. Finger do for Icy. Hollywood star's runway spoke more of a pool party than a barbecue, but seeing as they both happen in the backyard, you heard me, I'll admit it. Finger do for Holly. As for what the judges thought of the queens this week, well, Michelle loved Gabriella's runway, but was not impressed by her performance, which she called more of a spark of an idea. That's not good. Reese was sorry to see that Gabby hadn't added anything to her act like she said she was during rehearsal, and Rue just flat out expected more from Gabby. Bumpa didn't fare much better. Michelle thought she had even less of a spark than Gabby as far as her performance was concerned. Reese was expecting more of a roast and less of a golden shower, while everyone agreed that Bumpa didn't have enough jokes to fall back on. Even Bumpa. Floor was next, and it was very clear that the judges loved both her act and her runway. But the best moment of Floor's critique was talking about being a registered nurse for dementia patients and how much she loves it. Well, and then, of course, Michelle thanking Floor on behalf of her dad, who had, she just lost to dementia. Seriously. It was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Isis, who still had a firm grasp of her meat, was up next. No one had nothing to say about nothing. Well, that's not true. Rue called her the fashionista of the season. So what, F everyone else's drag? Seriously. 
Last, but far from least, was Hollywood star, or I thought she was far from least until Michelle called her act common and samey. Well, except for the live singing. Michelle wished it had been more of that because it was so different. Something else that Michelle said to Hollywood was that she still felt she didn't know her. Well, whose fault is that? Invite someone over for tea, why don't you? Oh, tea. On the positive side, Rude did like the campiness of her outfit, but she agreed with Michelle. Like it or not, Hollywood has to bring her walls crumbling down if she wants to win this race. I'm so serious. Back in the workroom, it was more or less agreed that Isis and Floor were in the top this week. Floor couldn't have been more pleased, naturally. Someone who wasn't pleased, Senor Gabriella Labucci. She was sure it was her and Bumpa who were going to be in the bottom, bless her heart. Back on the main stage, it was announced that this week's winner was Isis Avis Loran. Here's the Isis. And... Here's the floor. Seriously. That left Hollywood star Gabriella Labucci and Bumpa Love in the bottom. But just as Rue told Hollywood she was safe, Hollywood asked Rue what it was that she wanted to see from her. Well, Rue said she wanted to see the wall down. And seeing as Hollywood's 28, and that's when Saturn returns home, this is the moment. Well, thank you, Rue. That cleared that up, said no one ever. So it was Bumpa and Gabriella lip syncing for their lives to Jets. Are you going to be my girl? What is it with these male voices? Couldn't Down Under splurge for Danny Minogue at least? Seriously, she's got to have more than one hit by now, no? This lip sync was okay. Neither of these queens are known for their finishing moves, so the lip sync was pretty tame. That doesn't mean they didn't give it a try. Gabriella tried a cartwheel and Bumpa tried crawling on the floor. As far as I could see, neither of these queens were making it easy to choose who was better. But when the music died, Choose Rue did, and she chose Gabriella Labucci. Personally, I think she just enjoys saying her name. And with great sadness, it was a delightful Bumpa love who sashayed away. I, for one, am going to miss Bumpa. She's a lovely queen, and I'm super glad that I got the chance to meet her. But... Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say that she'd been circling the bowl. It was just a matter of time before she sashayed. What about Gabriella Labucci? I think the judges are right. She has been resting on her laurels. Let's hope that this is the kick in the padded ass that she needed to get her off her duff and back in the game. What about you? Do you think it was Bumpa's time, or do you feel Gabriella Labucci dodged a bullet? And what about Flora? Will she ever get a win, or has the moment passed her by? And what about that teaser for next week's episode? Did Hollywood lie about her age? Well, it's not like anyone's done that before. There's so many questions left unanswered, so all we can do is tune into RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under next week to see how it all turns out. And when you're done, you come on back and you see me so you and I can compare notes. Now, please support my channel by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Also, you can support the Finger Do Review by leaving a tip or do through the thanks button under this screen or by using the link in my description box along with links to joining the Finger family on Patreon and getting your own Wilma merch in my Redbubble store. Until next time, miss me! Mwah! Seriously. Well, God bless Bumpa. God bless Bumpa. You know, uh, the hard thing with uh, your mentors is if they're a good mentor, you're going to be better than them. They're going to give you skills and teach you to run with them, and you're going to be better than them. If Bumpa was giving all these queens their first start uh, into the industry, she must have seen something worthy of them to put them on a stage. I mean, she's she's got her own reputation to contend with. She's not going to put bad people on a stage. And then if those people keep getting the chance to perform, they're only going to get better. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that uh, Bumpa... Uh, didn't last until the top three. Um, but I'm so glad we got a chance to see her. Queen. Bitches, she hugs everyone after the show.